Hello there, welcome back to the third and final installment of this mini series where I paint all the miniatures from the cute and cooperative adventure board game Stuffed Fables. A game where you play as a band of adorable little plushies trying to protect a girl from the evils of Nightmareland. Last time we painted the plushies, but this week it's all about the bad guys, the villains, the evil bosses. The goal for these folks is to paint them at a high tabletop standard, like we did for the heroes. Here however, we're not aiming for cute and cuddly, we want mean and dirty. So we want some contrast, some weathering and some evil spookiness. So let's get to the painting lab. I'm gonna start our little group of evil doers with Knuckles, a big gorilla plushie with a massive cleaver. As always, we are gonna start our miniature with a zenithal undercoat through the airbrush. I start with a brown base layer, rhinoxide of course, followed by a white ink from above. Then I apply two thin coats of green contrast paint through the airbrush over the entire figure. You don't need an airbrush for this, you could use uh, two rattle cans and just apply your contrast paint or transparent paint equivalent with a brush. It wouldn't look as smooth, but that could add to the creepiness factor. After that, I'm gonna do my usual three steps layering method for a lot of elements on the figure. This method is a quick way to get you started with volumetric highlights. We pick three colors, shadow, mid-tone and a highlight. I base coat with my shadow color first. Then I cover the bits parallel to the light rays with my mid-tone. And finally, the light facing bits with the highlight. I do it from a brown to orange for the knife handle and the mask. And I do it from a dark olive green to a light apple green for the hands, the chest and eyebrows. I futz with it a little more on the chest area because it's a more difficult volume that takes a big part of the miniature, so I want it to look nice. So I make thin glazes of my three colors, uh, which I use to smooth out the transitions or correct my line placement. When that's done, I go to highlight the main body that I've only airbrushed so far. I simply add some flesh tones to the green contrast paint I used on the body and just highlight the spots that are facing the light. I try to do it with lots of small lines to simulate a sort of fur texture. And I stop at one highlight color because I want the attention to be drawn elsewhere, namely the face, the hands and the cleaver. Also because I'm lazy. Now it's time for the small details bit. I trace the stitch lines with some wild wood before painting all the cotton bits sticking out with some light grey. I pull out my plushy blood recipe of Griff Charger Grey Contrast mixed with some purple ink and just apply it straight onto the cotton and around the wound to dirty it up. Plushies bleed purple, it's a well-known fact. I hit the eyes with the black followed by a small white dot which was quite hard with that mask in the way. I paint the base blue and the rim black and then varnish everything before doing the metals. I do my usual quick metals recipe with a dark base coat of Vallejo metal color steel with some Payne's gray ink. Then a first highlight with some metal color silver and finally some Vallejo metal color aluminium in the brightest spots. I add some rust with an undiluted brown, followed by a bit of orange. I grab the blood mix again, add some gloss varnish to it and dab some onto the cleaver to make it look like he's just chopped some plushies. 
And that's Knuckles all painted. One down, four to go. Now it's the Snatcher's turn. This mini is a giant four-armed robot cyclops, so I'm gonna cut some corners here. I'm mainly gonna paint him metal, except for the chest and the head. I base coat his entire body using green stuff foil metal pigment bronze. Once that's done, I shade the Snatcher with some wildwood shot from below with the airbrush. This gives me a strong start on the miniature in no time. After that, I do some panel lining all over it with wildwood contrast paint. Then I add some verdigris in places where I think water would pull or that would not get polished through continuous friction. I try to be random about it to turn off the part of my brain that's desperately trying to make it all symmetrical. My last step on the metal bits is to highlight it with a mix of my bronze and Vallejo metal color aluminium. I do a lot of edge highlight with it and hit some top facing spots that I feel deserve attention. And that's it for the bronze. Time for the grey bits. The grey parts on the robot are just gonna be the chest and the lower part of the head. These bits don't really lend themselves to my three color layering technique since they are very round or just flat with no relief. Instead, I paint them all grey first. I darken the obvious underside bits with thin black paint, but you can use any dark grey, obviously. After that, I try to get a nice blend going on the chest from my dark grey at the bottom to a lighter grey at the top. This takes me a while and I use various techniques like wet blending and glazing to get to where I want it. It's probably the only mini or spot on a mini where I really worry about having a good blend since it's so obviously smooth and round. And to finish with the grey, I grab a light one and do some edge highlights on the head and some scratches all over it. And with that, our robot's pretty much done. I paint the lens tube with my usual steel recipe. And the actual lens like a gem. Blue base, black rim, done. For our little doll maker here, we are going for Crazy Scientist. First, I base coat him with a grey before spraying some very light grey on him from above. Next, I get out the brush and apply that light grey again by brush on the light facing spots at the top of the mini, like the shoulders and the raised arm. The other parts of the mini are done very quickly using transparent paint. I apply a flash tone to the face, some green for the gloves and the pants, Templar contrast on the shoe and red to the glasses. Then I highlight it all by adding some pale flesh to all the transparent paints I used. It works great.
I push it one last time by adding more pale flesh. If I feel I have too stark contrast or need a smooth blend, I, a slight glaze of the transparent paint will do the job just fine. I finished the doll maker by painting the lens like blue gems. The base blue and the rim black. I vanish him and paint his oversized needle in my usual steel recipe. Two to go. To paint this creepy girl, I'm gonna get some inspiration from the ring. I'm gonna give her a bluish undead skin color as well as a pale and dirty dress. For the cherry on top, some glowy eyes. I start by base coating the entire miniature in purple. I then spray some light grey from above to get a good zenithal highlight going. I use the light grey again on higher light facing places like the color of the dress, some parts of the face and also on hands even if they're not completely facing the light. I want to make the skin a little glisteny. After that, I applied Creef Charger Grey Contrast on the skin to make it grey-blue. And I think this makes a killer desaturated blue skin. After that, I go back to my plushy blurred mix of Creef Charger Grey and Purple Ink. I start dabbing it on the bottom of the robe, the end of the sleeves and the end of the collar as well to break up the white. The goal of the dabbing is to make it look dirty and stained. For the hair, I'm gonna do a heavy coat of black templar on it first. Then I go back with some grey for highlights. I don't pick out individual hairs yet, uh, just more of a volume. I sort of target light facing ones. Then I use a light grey for final highlights. I make them smaller and I sort of pick up hair strands to make the hair look somewhat shiny. Highlighting hair is a tricky thing because it's a shiny surface. Don't think I did it super well here, but not terrible either, so it'll do. After that, I paint the glowy eyes. I paint them white first before glazing it all with a mix of fluorescent paint and green ink. I go back to white again and glaze again with just fluo this time. To finish, I put some brown stains on the dress. Paint the base blue and the rim black and she's good to go. For our last miniature here, I want to try and go for a creepy evil wizard in pajamas look. I will give him some grey blue robes and most importantly some glowy eyes and light coming from his hands. I start with a dark blue base coat all over him. I add a bit of sky blue to the last color and start spraying from above with a slight forward tilt. This gives a good base for the robes so I do the skin next. I paint it in a dark tan color before giving it a wash of fire slayer contrast paint. I then highlight it as I would when using my three steps layering by adding some off-white color to the dark tan to get the mid-tone and highlight. I use off-white instead of a pale flesh tone because I want to desaturate the skin. I then glaze it all with the previous wash to smooth the transitions. Now onto the vest. I wanted a lighter blue than the rest of the robes, so I use the highlight color for my robe as the base for the vest. I do the three-step layering, adding more and more sky blue to get the mid-tone and highlight. 
I futz with this one a fair bit to get a good transition going at the front, since I feel it's an important part of the miniature. At this point in the painting, I'm not too happy with how the robes are going. I feel like the robe and the vest are too similar in color, but I want to keep painting bits here and there before doing anything about it, because it could simply be a case of not enough other values around for my eyes to read the colors as different. So I paint the belt quite simply with a brown base and a single highlight by adding off-white to it. I also paint the hair in the same way I did Skrillaz. Black tempo coat, grey volume highlight, and light grey small line to get a shiny hair look. For the boots, I do a layer of black templar before highlighting with a dark grey. I do the eyes and the teeth in a light grey after a small wash to get a clean separation from the rest of the face. At this point, I'm still not pleased with the robes, so I decide to darken them down with a dark blue glaze. I make sure to act quickly and spread it well to avoid weird coffee stains and pulling since this is a big smooth surface. I highlight it again by adding some sky blue to the previous color but I'm careful not to go too far. And with the robes repainted, I'm quite happy with the current state of things, so I might as well mess it up by attempting some object suits lighting. The approach here is that it's need to not be overpowering or it's gonna look weird. I'm gonna imagine the light as spheres of light to check where I should put paint on so it looks believable. Ideally, the light source should be the brightest point on the me, but since you're not on it, it will have to be the closest point which are the hands. Since I'm going for a green glow, I start by glazing a dark transparent green where the light would hit. That means inside of the hands, sleeves, side of the face and hat. After that, I add some off-white to the green to make it lighter and more opaque. And I apply that to things close to and directly facing the light. I add more off-white as I get closer to the hands. Then I do a final pass of fluorescent green over it all for some pop. It's not the best OSL ever, but it does the job. Next, I paint the eyes the same way I did for Screeda. Just adding a pupil at the end. I paint the base blue, rim it black and varnish it all before doing the metallic belt buckle. And that's Decrepitus done.
And that's all the bosses painted. It was a lot of fun because I got to take my time on each of them and try out things. But with those last minis done, that is all of Stuff Fables painted. This entire project has been a lot of fun from beginning to end. It took me about three weeks of normal hobby time and felt incredibly rewarding when playing the game with painted minis. But that's it for our little painting session here. I hope you found it useful. For the next one, now that Project Creepy Doll is finished, I will get back to my true love, and that's dinosaurs. But in the meantime, I have to give a conference on dark matter flavored ice cream. So until then, I hope you stay adventurous and that you keep painting. Cause painting is cool. Yeah.